from Eternal Food Evangelistic Organization, and Outreach Ministry of Christ's Disciples Fellowship. Welcome. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of the Bread Broadcast, where the Gospel is preached concerning salvation by grace through faith in Christ Jesus, a sanctified Christian daily living by the power of the Holy Spirit, and an assured eternal glory for the saved, and eternal condemnation for the lost, here to bring today's Bread Broadcast is, Josephine Zion Taylor. Our topic for today is the rapture. What to know? It's a beautiful, beautiful topic. The rapture. What to know? Our short reading is from the first epistle to the church at Thessalonica, chapter 4. Verse 13 through 18. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verses 13 through to 18. And our case study, believers, that is the church. Let us pray. Father God, through our Lord Jesus Christ, we want to say thank you. We thank you for your promises. Oh, we thank you for your plan. We thank you for your purpose. We thank you, oh Lord, that you have gone to prepare a place for us. Father, as your word goes out in this program, let it bring salvation, healing, comfort, and strength to every listening heart and blessed Holy Spirit. Let the Lord Jesus alone be glorified in and through this message. For in Jesus' name have we prayed. Amen and amen. Our foundation text is from the gospel according to St. John, chapter 14, verse 3. John 14, 3. This is the Lord Jesus speaking. And if I go and prepare a place for you, that is for believers, I will come again, hallelujah, and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Praise the name of the Lord, hallelujah. What can we learn about the rapture? Uh, we are not going to go into the scholastic uh, aspect, if you will, of this um, uh, topic. We are just going to look at what the Holy Spirit wants us to know, the truth about the rapture. We are not here for head knowledge. Amen. Number one, the rapture is a rescue. The Lord will come for his church where no one expects. Hallelujah. We know this because the Lord himself said, The Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect. The Greek word, hapazo, that is translated as raptured, means to snatch or take away suddenly. The reason for this is twofold. First, this is the Lord fulfilling his promise, which he made before he went to the cross in John chapter 14, as we just read in a foundation text. Secondly, it is also to remove the church. Now, when I keep saying the church, it means the body of believers. The church is not a building. The Bible has never called a building the church. The church is an, organi is an organism, a living body. It's to re remove the church that is believers in Christ Jesus from the colossal wasting and destruction that we burst open on the earth when the antichrist we make some sort of peace 
with Israel for a period of seven years as prophesied um, according to um, prophet Daniel. However, three and a half years into the so-called peace contract, the Antichrist will break the peace and usher in an agonizing three and a half years of biblical proportions. In fact, the Bible calls it the time of Jacob's trouble and it's also the great tribulation. True followers of the Lord Jesus will be snatched out of this planet before this starts because God has not appointed believers to suffer wrath but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Some misguided souls, they believe that the church will go through the great tribulation. Well, help yourself with the Antichrist if that's what you are looking forward to. I am looking forward to being snatched out of this jungle anytime. Praise God. And so is any believer who reads the word of God. The rapture will be faster than the blinking of the heart of the eye. However, the world will continue as usual. Uh, one brother said he believes if the rapture should happen on, uh, on a Sunday morning, early in the morning, he said he believes that there will be some churches in America, not only in America, let me add, all over the world, they will still come for church service. And believers have gone, you see. So things will continue as usual. This is because those that are left behind are spiritually dead to what is going on and have no idea about what is about to take place on the world stage. Let's go to the second epistle of Apostle Peter as written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 2 verse 9. Second Peter 2 9. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. He saved Lot and his family before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. Let's back, go back a little bit uh, uh, into the book of Genesis. He saved Noah and his family before the flood came. God always saves his own people before trouble hits. He can save us by taking us home. And people will say, oh, he or she died young. Oh, no. The Lord has seen the future. And he knows that it's best to take that child home. And he'll say, come on home, son. Or come on home, girl. Let's go. This is a jungle anyway. He will do whatever it takes. Hallelujah. To stay the wave until he has the saved. Joseph in Zion. That is so beautiful. Say that again. The God of the Bible is a beautiful God. He will do whatever it takes. Hallelujah. To stay the wave until he has the saved. Moving on. The rapture is a reunion. I like that part. Oh, Lord. Through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Apostle Paul right to let us know that the rapture will happen in a certain order. It's not going to be igledy pigledy. It's not going to be half a side. No, there is order. The believers who have been buried right from the time of Adam, those who have believed Old Testament saints, up until the last person who died or slept in the Lord in this time of ours will be resurrected first. Then believers who are still living on this planet will follow. That is the order. 
and together we will join the Lord in the air. Hallelujah. This is so beautiful. Love it. The appearance of Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration and the disciples, uh, the disciples recognition of these two old Testament figures in addition to the recognition of poor Lazarus by the rich man in the story that the Lord Jesus told in the book of Luke chapter 19 confirmed to us beyond any doubt that people will recognize one another in eternity. I'm going to recognize my brother. Oh Lord, I'm going to recognize my mother-in-law, my grandmother, my dad, so many loved ones, friends who have gone before. I am going to recognize them. Are you kidding me? Oh Lord, this is beautiful. And for us believers who are together in heaven with our loved ones who slept in the Lord, there will be a great reunion devoid of any kind of sadness. What kind of sadness? Who is going to be sad for leaving this place? Huh? For leaving this, this demon, uh, molested, uh, planet. Really? Let's go to the book of Psalm. The book of Psalms, chapter 16, verses 10 and 11. For thou will not leave my soul in hell. That is the place of the dead. That's what, um, the Old Testament saint called hell at the time. Uh, the, the Lord Jesus made us to realize that, uh, there is a, a section for believers which is called, uh, Abraham's bosom. That's where Old Testament saints were going, uh, in that time. But when the Lord Jesus died and rose again on the third day, the Bible tells us he brought all the old saints who died in God. He brought them out of that a paradise that Abraham's bosom and took them to heaven with himself. Hallelujah. The book of Matthew tells us that many of these saints, they, they, they appear to their loved ones in Jerusalem. You see, that's that you cannot deny that. Praise God. Neither will thou suffer thine only one to see corruption. Thou wilt shew me the path of life in thy presence is fullness of joy at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore there will be no more sorrow no more sadness hallelujah forever i will praise when i see his face listen i thought this wonderful sister of mine uh i don't know how many years back eight nine she said sister josephine what are you going to do when we see the Lord Jesus face to face? I said, I don't know, but I know I'm going to go crazy. Uh, she said, I'm going to hang on his neck <laughs> for three million years. I said, well, at least you have a plan, but I don't know what I'm going to do. But I know I'm going to be beside myself. Forever, I will praise when I see his face. Hallelujah. Moving on. The rapture is going to be a reception. Belie believers will be treated to the best homecoming like never seen before at the wedding supper of the Lamb. That is, the Lord Jesus Christ is the Lamb. Since the church is the Lord's bride, the next thing is to have a wedding reception now that the bridegroom, the Lord Jesus, and the bride, the church, have now been reunited. Isn't that beautiful? It will be a time of faith parade. Who? Of those who through faith did many great things for God and had waited and died trusting God for the promise of a better resurrection. This reception is also where the judgment, the judgment seat of Christ, that is where our Christian walk will be evaluated and rewarded 
accordingly. Everything we have done as believers will be reviewed and rewarded. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 13. Each one's work will become clear. My work will, be cl will become clear. Your work will become clear if you are a child of God. For the day we declare it, the judgment seat of Christ, we declare it. If you are doing it with a, a personal gain or personal motive, it will be it will be an open scandal on that day. If I'm not doing it as I'm supposed to do it, that day will show. Because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. It will give gains for all the pains that we sustained for his sake on that day. I don't know from where on this planet you are watching this program. Uh, because we, we, we receive subscri subscriptions all the time and they are from all over the place, all over the world. If in your country, Christianity is a, is a crime. Hold on, brother. If you can get prosecuted and thrown in jail because you confess the Lord Jesus. Hold on, sister. We are going home very soon. The Lord Jesus is on his way. He will soon come and take us out of this jungle. Hold on. He will give gains for all the pains that you have sustained for his sake on that day. Moving on. The rapture is for the redeemed. The rapture is only for the saved. If you're a pagan, please listen. I will show you how this can be turned around for you. Those who have voluntarily bowed their knees to the Lord Jesus, who have surrendered their souls to him, and have turned over the affairs of their lives for him to be the director and the boss. Those are the people that the rapture is for. The Lord is only coming for the redeemed, those whose names he can claim before the Father. Because he knows them personally and they know him. So if somebody says, well, you can't know if you're going to heaven, blasphemy. The devil is a liar. If you are a child of God, the Holy Spirit acting in you, speaking to you through him, you have personal fellowship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you will know beyond any shadow of doubt that you are going to heaven. If you cannot be sure that you are going to heaven, you have not been saved. It doesn't matter if you are the Pope in Rome. You have not been saved. But that can change. Those who know him personally, having been, having been having a personal fellowship with him in the person of the Holy Spirit, since they were born again, anyone, it doesn't matter if you are black, white, yellow, green, or purple, it doesn't matter if you are an African, Asian, or Caucasian, it does not matter if you are rich or poor or you are in between. Man, woman, boy or girl, it does not matter. If you are not in this category, the Bible says it's not coming for such a people because you will be seen as a rebel. Let's go to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19. The second epistle to Pastor Timothy. Chapter 2, verse 19. Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. The Lord knows those who are his, and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. 
And the seal that the Bible is talking about is in the person of the Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit. His bride will be by his side. Hallelujah. And in his light, we will shine. A day of shining is coming. Brethren, we are going to shine in his light. When it is time, his bride will be by his side. And in his light, we will shine when it is time. What have we done so far? What can we learn about the rapture? It is a rescue. That is to remove true believers from the earth before the reign of the Antichrist starts. It is a reunion. Believers will be reunited with Old Testament saints and loved ones who slept in the Lord and other saints. It's a reception. Believers will be rewarded for our Christian living and act. That tells you and I, we need to be careful how we represent the Lord Jesus Christ. The rapture is for the redeemed. Only those who believe in God as Old Testament saints and truly born again Christians in the New Testament until now will be raptured. According to our foundation text, the Lord Jesus himself promised to go and prepare a place for us and that he will come back for us, that is believers. For this not to be so, please listen, is to mean that the Lord Jesus has lied, <laughs> perished the thought, and everything he has said was a lie. However, we know that God is truth. The God of the Bible is true. Hallelujah. And he cannot lie because the Bible says so. Number one, and everything he said will happen concerning his own death, barrier, and resurrection happened with many infallible proofs. Number two, so therefore it is safe to conclude that the Lord Jesus is true. You have been told what the rapture is about and who the rapture is for. If you are not yet right with God, you are seriously in danger of being left behind, which means you will take the 666 Unless you are ready now to have a job, now to be able to buy food, not to be able to bank. I mean, you're not going to be able to do anything. You said, is that possible? Huh? What just happened with COVID-19? That would be like a child's play. I don't know about your country, but in the United States, at the peak of COVID, you could not go to some places without showing that you have been vaxxed. That's just a practice test, okay? Eventually, that is if you refuse to take 666, the Antichrist and his crowd will kill you. If that sounds scary to you, Today is the day of grace. Right now is the time of salvation. And may I add number three, why we know God is true and that everything that what the Lord Jesus said is true is that everything he promised will happen to anyone who believes on his name is what I am experiencing and my brothers and sisters all over the world are experiencing. He said, if we come to him, we will experience pardon and he will give us peace. There will be peace between us and God. We are experiencing that. And that he will provide for us. 
that he will give us the Holy Spirit to guide us every day. We are experiencing that. So that's how we know the Lord Jesus is true. Not only because of what the Bible says, but because everything is promised in the Bible, we happen to us, is happening to us. Now you have been told about the rapture. What are you going to do? If you are yet to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Huh? You want to go with Antichrist? 666? And damn your soul to hell forever? Oh no. Come on now. If that sounds scary and it is, a link is coming. Follow that link. We are waiting for you there to tell you how you can get saved. Let us pray. Dear Father God in heaven, we thank you for the plan of salvation. Thank you, dear sweet Lord Jesus, for the price of salvation that you paid. We want to say thank you, blessed Holy Spirit, for keeping the plan going, even for making us to stand in the faith every day. We thank you for the future that you have for us. The word has gone out as many who are not ready. They don't want to take part in the Antichrist's reign. The terror that is coming over this world. And they want to make it right with you. As they go to want to know Jesus' page. Father, let their heart and their mind be open. Give them the understanding. And let them know that you are here to save them and give them that assurance. And as for us who have already been saved, help us not to be selfish. Help us to tell the whole world that Jesus saves. For in Jesus' name, have we prayed. Amen and amen. I will see you next week. Only, I don't know, only if the Lord Jesus has not split his sky open. <laughs>